Indeed. Matt, Kevin McCarthy, he's tried to pin this chaos on what he calls the crazy eight. That includes Congressman Matt Gates. And, and yet, I, I'm old enough to remember when McCarthy capitulated to that group in order to become speaker in the first place. So as we watch all this unfold, what does it say about McCarthy? What does it say about the Republicans who gave him the boot that they didn't have a clear replacement or a clear plan in mind? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's short-term memories, and then there's the, I mean, what McCarthy did in enabling what he calls the crazy eight was not last year, was this year. He did it earlier this year. And so he, this, I think, and, and many of us talked about this, and I'm sure David did, Kevin C McCarthy created this mess. He created this mess by capitulating to Donald Trump early on after the 2020 election, after he criticized him, then went down to Mar-a-Lago and did this. And then he's capitulated to the crazy part of his caucus, which seems to be growing and growing and becoming more evident to more and more people. And it may actually become a majority of the caucus that is just off this sort of anti-government, doesn't care about what happens, welcomes a shutdown and all of that. But this is a mess of Kevin McCarthy's own making. Any rational person, would have saw this coming earlier in January as he did this, and it just came to fruition. Right, so when he says he is embarrassed, what he really means is I have embarrassed myself. David, McCarthy endorsing Emmer, Trump endorsed Jordan, of course. We saw how that worked out for Jim Jordan. Now Trump rallying his allies against Emmer. I wonder if this is a test of, of Trump's hold over the party, or if this is yet another example of what we've seen, which is, he doesn't have enough power to build it up, but he has just enough power to tear it down. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Alicia. And this also speaks to the very small majority Republicans have. So a loss of 10 people who follow the former president is enough to withhold the speakership from Tom Emmer or anybody else. And this is where that rule comes into play, where Emmer may get 51%, though it could take a while with nine different candidates, but let's presume he's the front runner. The Trumpist wing of, of the party and of conservative media has already come out and said no way to Tom Emmer because he did not vote to decertify the election and he's not a good enough Republican. That might be enough to kill Emmer's options. For instance, when Trump endorsed Jordan over Scalise, it wasn't enough to get Jordan there, but it was enough to kill Scalise's bid. And so if it's not Emmer, I think you kind of have to look at Kevin Hearn or Mike Johnson, who led the 100-plus conservative caucus, the Republican study group, maybe Byron Donalds, but he's only been there for a very short time. Jack Bergman from Michigan, a retired three-star uh, who is in his 70s, would be a very different touch. But here's the bottom line. And I said this when people said Jim Jordan would be far worse than McCarthy. They're all bad, Alicia. The only difference between McCarthy and Jordan is McCarthy would take a while to get to where Jordan was. Jordan started with the authoritarian, anti-democratic crazy. It just took a while for McCarthy to get there. That's the same with all of these candidates. They would all end up being a speaker who ultimately gets to where Jim Jordan starts. That's the danger we face. Right. I mean, Matt Dowd, I'm invested in the story because I want a government that actually functions. Having a speaker in place gets us back to where we were, the status quo that is not necessarily a Republican-led Congress that can deliver. Well, you would definitely not fit in the GOP caucus if that's what you want, a government that works. I mean, I think that's what we've come to. And I think this speaker's race shows that this is a caucus filled with performance artists who have no idea or have desire of any type of governance. They, they would just as soon send out social media posts, rec, take a wrecking ball to whatever they possibly can. I mean, that is the become the majority of the caucus. And what I think it demonstrates is Donald Trump holds sway over the caucus because the GOP voters hold sway over the caucus. And they're where Donald Trump is, as we can see in the presidential rest race and any number of issues in this. The problem Donald Trump has and the GOP has is the same thing that evidenced it him itself in 2022, which is you can dominate a primary, but then you nominate the Kerry Lakes and the other candidates who have a very difficult, if not impossible, time winning a general election. That's what they get. They can dominate within a caucus, and then they go out to a broader group where they need 217 total votes, and that's where they run into a wall in this. It's Donald Trump's 
got 80% approval rating among Republican voters. Republican voters follow him. Rep Donald Trump leads Republican voters, and it's where they want to go. But in the end, they can't get to a majority status, and that becomes the fundamental problem.